There may come a time in your shop botting where you need to cut a piece of material that's larger than your machine or you have multiple little pieces that need to be tiled. Uh, using the tile and tool path option in the Vectric software, you can tile a project. This training is going to show you how to do this on a ShopBot desktop where the material is larger than the machine bed. The patio chair is one of a couple projects I will demo for this training. As you can see, it's a nice chair, but it also has long parts which are too big for the desktop. What we can do, though, is see that on a 4x8, four, four it's nice to just lay up one sheet of plywood and be able to nest it in there and go. But with the tile tool path, we're able to take this project and make it into blanks that would fit on the ShopBot desktop and index it along in the Y direction. For this patio chair to work on a desktop, we're going to have to tile this along the Y axis. Our X axis on a desktop gets us 24 inches across, but our Y we're limited to 18. And as you see, to get the patio chair to fit, I need a full 48 inches. What I've done here to get this to work, I had to break this into two different sheets to nest the parts since I am limited to the 24 inches in the X. So here's where we can see that it fits on sheet 1 and here we can see that the legs fit on sheet 2. So the key to get started with tiling a project is nothing different than setting up a regular project that would fit. You draw the job size of the exact size board that you have. When we get into tiling of this, over here on the toolpath side is where we have the tile toolpaths. And we'll step back and look at a simpler project and run through the full process of it and then we'll come back and finish with tiling this project here. Let's start by looking at this V-carve project. This is just a simple importer of a vector and it's a two two part uh, tile. So nothing nothing different out here. I got a nice clean flat spoil board I've marked X and Y and zero zero just for the video purpose. And uh, here we are zeroing our Z plate. What I like to do it's a nice trick is use indexing pins where I actually use some little 3 8 dowel pins and put those dowel pin holes into the spoil board and then also into our project that we're working with so when we go to slide down to the next uh, tile that we want to cut we can line it up with pins because that's the key to tiling a project is getting each time you move it to line back up from where the previous uh, cut was so here you can see the little 3 8 dowel pins being cut into the spoil board and now let's go and look at the file so you can see where that alright here we are looking at the CAD file for this and like I sh said on the previous with the patio chair I went in here and I measured the size of my board and that's what I draw my job size as the size of the board uh, I know right now that I'm using a ShopBot desktop so I am limited to 18 inches right here 18 inches in my Y direction so obviously this isn't gonna fit but I do set my job set up exactly like I uh, have my board and uh, again it's the tool tiling over here where we'll set our tiles these two indexing pins uh, there really is no rhyme or reason to where those were except that on my this is a copy of the ShopBot desktop spoil board and if I put that in here and line that up with zero zero I can see where I've already got existing layout holes or where I've got the uh, steel bolts that hold it to the aluminum frame. So I just put my first two layout holes in an area where they would not hit. <clears throat> but we saw that part of the video where it cuts these into the spoil board. And this is where you see over here the spoil board toolpath. It ran just the simple, I saved this out like I would a regular file, and it ran those two indexing holes. The next set is where we'll see is it makes the material index holes where we needed to, again, I had the 18 inches in the Y. I needed to have a set of indexing holes that I could slide down and line up with this when I do my uh, tile. So let's show you the next video and we'll come back to this file. Okay, so we put the two holes in the spoil board and now we've got our material which you know for something like this I just need a little wedge in the back but if you got a big long piece it's good to level it up you can get some rollers they make some different extension arms that you could put underneath there 
But now that I put the material on, I now need to take my bit and re-zero to the top of the material. I zero to the top because it's easier to uh, first do the spoil board. Now I'm just redoing my Z zero plate and zeroing now to the top of the material. I can use the same file, just save the toolpath separate. So here it is, you see it touching down twice, doing the zeroing. Uh, for this, I just ran a couple drywall screws off to the edge where I knew I wasn't going to be cutting, um, just to use it for the hold down. And again, right now it's just eyeballed at zero zero this front left corner. But once I cut the indexing pins into the material itself, I'll be able to line those up with the two holes I drilled down in the spoil board earlier. So notice so far all of the work we haven't even really gone in and tiled in the tool pad, tile in the tool pad. Everything so far has just been a regular file save, save out to Shopbot, post processor, and go. Nothing. We just saw the two indexing holes being cut in the material, and this is where we do need to start tying in with the tile tool paths. Where where did the location of these holes come from? So remember, on our desktop, we're limited to the 18 inches. So when I come over here to set up a tile, which is the third one over, tile tool paths, uh, I have the different options I can follow through. If I want to tile the tool path, I can do it through the X, the Y, I can do individual tiles. It depends. You can look at the different vector tutorials on their site for different types of tiling. But for this one here, we're limited on a desktop to do it through the Y. So. Um, Again, if my t if my cutting surface is only 24 by 18, instead of maxing out the shot bot, I just brought my tile down to 16 inches. Now that way, I got a little bit of extra space in here, uh, and that allows me to come and put a set of holes in here. So, key for me right now, the 16 inch works great. I can get this eagle head in two tiles, and um, like I said here, the tile height for this I chose is 16 inches, um, and uh, had very good success with no overlap just leaving it with a zero overlap and a tile of 16 it's worked great for doing a couple of these uh, that 16 inches needs to correspond with the distance of these holes so wherever you put your first set of holes uh, you need to offset those up the same distance of your tile so there's my 16 inches so you can see over here in steps as I started drawing I did a larger one where I did the first set of holes on the eagle head and then I just copied those and uh, offset them up 16 inches off on center. So that's the key. If you're going to tile this at 16 inches, you need to have your layout holes 16 inches apart. And that gives you what we call here the index holes. So um, right now we've only cut into tile 1 because everything fits in that first 18 inches uh, I haven't needed to save this as a tile toolpath yet uh, what we will do and you'll see on the video next is we'll, we'll re-zero we'll put a v-bit in and now what we need to do is we need to do this v-carve which goes on both tiles right now if I go up here and hit save toolpath it's just going to save it as a regular shopbot file v-carve eagle and um, what would happen if we tried running this as it, as it carved here it would be going fine but then it would try to go beyond the limits of the table and error out or if you don't have your warnings turned on it would lose position and you hear it crash uh, what we need to do here is turn on the tile tool path where it has this here's where we can set up which way we're going to uh, feed it I said 16 inch tiles I can switch between the tiles here you can even throw this into 3D view and look at the two different tiles and what they would be doing on tile 1 or tile 2 and see it. You can even preview this in the 3D portion as well and see what your different tile cut would be. So with that being said, what I can do with this tile 1 and tile 2, as long as I've got this brought up, I come over here and I save this and I'm just nothing nothing different. I'm just saving the v-carve because I've already cut my spoil board holes and I've already cut my material index holes. I'm going to save this. Sorry about that. I'm going to save this on my desktop. I had a tiling a project, and in here we'll call this just our V Carve Eagle. And I save that. 
And if I minimize my software and I look into my tiling project, there is a T1 V dot carve eagle and a T2. So I can load up my SP3 and run V1 and V2, which is what we'll look at next in the video. All right, we ran our file. Here we are taking the bit out, put the V bit. Every time you change a bit, make sure you pull that collet, that collet nut apart, knock out any sawdust, and spring them back together before you put them back in. That's for anybody with a spindle, big or small. Make sure you're doing that every step. Just a side note to throw in there. But here I am putting it in, tightening it up, and re-zeroing my Z. So notice the board hasn't moved yet. We cut our indexing pins in the spoil board. We cut the indexing uh, holes in the material. And now we're going to run T1, which is tile 1 of the two that we just saved. <clears throat> so as I go over and uh, tell that thing to start on my ShopBot 3 control software, it's just now going to do tile 1. It knows to stay on the first 16 inches of material and it will go ahead and carve there you can see the material hanging off the backside I got a little shim under there to keep it flat um, <clears throat> and it stops right there at the 16 inches because that's what I told it to do and when I gave it a parameter in my uh, tile tool path for more complicated files say like the patio chair or even with bit changes when you save that it will save and just follow along the same process that you did before. It'll give you the same prompts that you see, and it's just like running the, the regular file, except that in between your um, distances of what you set your tile, you'll just have to move the board down to the next size. Okay, so we see that it gets done. It's stopping right at the 16-inch the, the mark. And then the ShopBot will pick up, go out of the way. We got to come in now. We're t taking off the screws. Again, we haven't lined this thing up yet. It's just it's zero, zero. That's why I had to pre-cut the holes in the spoil board, and I've pre-cut the holes in the material. But since I'm moving things around, and there's sawdust, and there's been cutting, make sure you blow stuff off. It's always good to have a dust-free, nice flat environment. But there's my couple holes in the spoil board. These are just little dowel pins. You can get them from the woodworking stores. And they just go in there. And then that lines that right up. You get different lengths of them for doing different material thicknesses. And there, that holds it in place. Again, I could put a shim out here if it was a longer board or some sort of table extension. Level that up. The short board, the two screws are going to hold it right in place. So again, now, no bit change, no nothing. I'm just going to go in back to the SB3 software, my ShopBot control software, and I'm going to go file part load. And now it's uh, T2, which is tile 2 for Eagle. And boom, you can see where it connects. So I've just shifted it down 16 inches. And now I'm cutting the second side of the Eagle head and it lines right up and that's where the indexing pins are really nice it makes it really easy for me to line this up this isn't the only way to do it there's different jigs you can make there's a lot of different uh, ways for sliding that along but the indexing pins are nice and true because they're just a certain hole right, right there that it has to fit the dowel pin fits right in and it just makes a nice tight fit I really like that for uh, tiling projects so let's look back at this patio chair real quick. Uh, if I go back into the uh, VCAR file here, I had made sheet 1 and sheet 2 because again on the desktop I'm limited to 24 on my X. Uh, now that we know a little bit more about coming in here, you could make your own indexing pins, but just to show you the tile tool path in full, uh, this being a full 48 inch by 24 inch, uh, I turn on my tile tool path, I need to tile in the I can't do it in the X, I need to do it in the Y, so I feed through the Y. Right now it says our tile is 48 inches. Again, I'm limited to 18 with my desktop, where I can type that in, hit update tiles, and that shows I got a T1, a T2, and a T3. Three tiles to do those parts. <clears throat> uh, again, depending on your uh, layout or your uh, indexing pins, whichever way you want to go, you can change your tile height. Um, also remember too, you can always do your 3D preview 
You can come in and say, hey, I just want to see what it looks like if I ran tile one. Preview that. There's the start. If I switch now to tile two, turn my tool pass on, it's going to show me what tile two does. And I can get in here and view it just like I would a normal, uh, regular size project without it being tiled. And again, same thing with uh, number three with tile 3 you just turn it on show the active tile make sure this is open because when you come in here and you go to save you've got all three picked having this open allows you to go save it's going to save your there's our three save tool paths and then on our desktop I had a shortcut to my folder where I hit Save my patio chair. All I type in and I hit save. And now, if we look inside that folder, here we go our patio chair. We got T1, T2, T3. It split it apart. If you go in here and look at the code, you'd go in and you'd see where it's nothing different than before. It gets, it runs its portion of the 18 inches and then it goes and does its new path. Of, you know, it gets done doing the pocket, then it goes and does the profiles. Uh, it would do the same thing if you had a bit change in there, but it's going to prompt you just like it normally would in the SB3 software. That wraps up today's training. Just to go back over what we were doing was tiling a project that was larger than our machine bed. Uh, there are several other tutorials out there uh, on the Vectric site. You can see ones on tiling 3D on there. But uh, I like to show today the emphasis on using these indexing pins and how you can use those with the tile toolpath function to very accurately shift this over and get a nice transition line in here but experiment with it uh, practice it a couple times and once you get it down it's really not a bad process and it makes it very nice to use larger material on smaller shopbots so I hope you enjoyed this and check out our other videos at shopbottools.com thank you